Let me introduce our speakers today. So what will happen in the coming maybe about 30 minutes, um, Professor uh, ben Im, director of our admissions office and exchange, will be doing their university introduction and the program and exciting updates. And then we will have Trey and Ariel doing the sharing to tell you more about studying and uh, social life in Hong Kong U. And after that, I will provide a more vital information about their procedures and requirements and timeline and everything. So if you have any question, we do have consultation um, room available that will be uh, starting from 8, 1 8 p.m. at the library extension, I think it's number five, library extension five for international qualification consultation. So if you have any question, please go there um, after 1 p.m. Okay, so without further ado, let me introduce Pro Professor Ben Im to introduce the University of Hong Kong in general and our exciting update. Thank you, Sorian. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the, uh, Hong Kong U and also to our information day. I understand that like, uh, many of you have arrived early, and, and I hope that like, uh, you have a present time already before joining our talk. Uh, this year, we also make a slightly different arrangement, so each of you are getting a ticket actually coming to here. We also want to use this opportunity to give you another souvenir. Hopefully, like, uh, you like the design on our uh, ticket as well. So I'm going to take a, a, maybe a few minutes to uh, give you some updates regarding the University of Hong Kong. Uh, as you can see on this slide, like this year's our major theme is AI and also sustainability, which are two hot topics at the moment. And certainly like this is also the current direction of the university. We want to move uh, like in the direction of like uh, AI. At the same time, we also want to be concerned about uh, issues related to sustainability. But also keep in mind, Hong Kong U is a comprehensive university, so we basically cover all the area in our research and teaching, so we are not only limiting to uh, AI and sustainability. Uh, I'm very happy to share, like uh, all along the University of Hong Kong, our research and teaching environment have always received uh, international recognitions, and particularly like among many of the uh, world university ranking organization have always been giving us like very high acclaim. And I'm very happy to report that like uh, in the latest uh, QS uh, world university ranking, which is uh, for 2025, our ranking now is in the top 17 in the world. Uh, this is our highest ever ranking that we have received. And we are very certainly very, very proud of this uh, spe specific honor. This is another testimony of Hong Kong, uh, the University of Hong Kong being a world-class university. Uh, in Hong Kong, we also have the highest ranking, uh, the highest ranking university in Hong Kong. We also rank second in Asia. Uh, other than the ranking, in fact, like, uh, I think why are we receiving all this good ranking? I think uh, part of that is because we are a comprehensive university, meaning that we provide like knowledge in all aspects and also teaching uh, opportunity in very many different aspects. We used to have like 10 faculty and this year I'm, I'm very happy to report to you that we are introducing two new schools. So together we'll have 10 faculty and two new schools and they offer up to 55 different programs and this undergraduate program cover more than 100 major and minor area. So as you can see, like uh, your, I mean, in the audience, I can see many of the students and also parents of our students. Uh, your children will be under very good hand learning the latest uh, information and, and knowledge from our university. Uh, other than the high ranking of the overall university, we also have quite a few of our subject matter that are also leading in the world. For example, our dentistry is ranked number three, our education is ranked number seven, and there's also many other programs that are in the top 25 in the world in terms of subject ranking. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, this year we are very pleased that we will introduce two new schools. The first school is School of Computing and Data Science, and the second one is uh, School of Innovation. And some of you may, may ask, like, why do we need to introduce new school? Uh, as you read in many of the news and also understand the world trend, we are facing a lot of problems in uncertain time as well. Uh, 
some of that related to kind of potential problem that everybody in the world together have to address. And many of these problems, in order to address them, we need cross-disciplinary, cross-like uh, country collaboration, cross-subject matter collaboration. So the introduction to the School of Computing and Data Science allow us to consolidate our resources and also put them in more efficient use and also encouraging a lot of cross-disciplinary collaboration. Under this new school, we restructure some of the program and provide up to five different degree programs. Uh, some of the degree program you may, if those of you have been uh, kind of keep track of our development, may know that in the past few years, we have introduced program in Bachelor of Arts and Science uh, in, in terms of FinTech and also Applied AI. Uh, our a truly science program has always been uh, with us and also is a very pop, pop, uh, popular program among our students' choices. Those programs will also be revamped and improved under the new school. Uh, this new school also will introduce two new programs. One is computing and data science, and the other one is statistical decision science. Uh, those are new programs that we will introduce, and at the same time, uh, one of the major change in the uh, arrangement of those programs is in the past, many of our students, if they want to choose a particular subject area, like computing, they have to come in in the first year, do well in their first year study, and then they can kind of select into some of those programs. But for these two new programs, once the student enter the program, they have all the freedom to choose any of the focus area within the program. They no longer need to go through any screening process. Now, of course, like, uh, in, in the interest of time, I will not be able to tell, tell you a lot about this new program. So I would suggest like, you actually go to a specific talk. So if you want to mark the time and the, and the place where this talk will happen, Please, like, if you find any of this uh, program interesting to you, please go and, and uh, attend a separate talk. Okay. Um, there's these two are the, the new program introduced by uh, the School of Computing and Data Science, and also they have their separate like, talk that will give you more information regarding the choices and also like, uh, what kind of career prospect would uh, they expect for the student. Uh, another new school that we are introducing this year is called the School of Innovation. Uh, and the term innovation, I'm sure you hear about it a lot. And it's also considered the most important driver of our future development, not only in the world, but also in Hong Kong as well. So under this new school, we offer one single program. It's the Bachelor of Science in Innovation and Technology. Uh, as I was told by my colleagues who are developing this program, this is a revolutionary program. I mean, what they are describing is they are going to turn the teaching and learning upside down. So in the past, when we learn, usually the, uh, in our teaching and learning, we start learning the basic knowledge, and then we, we learn the advanced knowledge, and then we look for applications and uh, kind of how we can kind of apply what we learn into addressing real world problem. This program turned everything upside down. At the beginning, the student, with the help of the faculty member, will try to identify specific problem that they intend to address and also application they intend to use. And then they reversely learn the necessary knowledge and, and tech kind of skill in order to tackle those problems. So at the end, they know what they learn will definitely have an application. This program also is very project-oriented. So students will identify project and make sure like all their knowledge can be applied to the project. This program also offers overseas co-op opportunity where they will get internship. And this program also allows our students to customize a lot more of their study as well. And again, if you're interested in this program, please make sure like uh, you go to their talk. And this is one of the programs that I would highly recommend uh, for our students to consider. Uh, another thing I want to highlight also, like, because this is kind of a session for uh, non jupiter students, also for internet for students with international qualification. Uh, we are the only university in Hong Kong that guarantee all our courses are taught in English. So as long as you know English, you have no restriction on whatsoever courses you want to take, because uh, we offer many, many different courses. And later on, our students will also share with you. Uh, we have the most flexible curriculum. So most of our students, in fact, everyone, if they want to, they can choose up to two major, two minor. And you can ask many of the different universities in the world and also in Hong Kong, how many of them can offer such kind of flexibility. And the reason why we offer all this flexibility is because these days our students, 
they're good not only like in us or science, but they actually can be doing both. So we in order to cater to the multiple interests of our students, we offer a very flexible curriculum. Uh, about 70% of our faculty members are also from overseas, and so uh, I think that also gives a very internationalized environment. Currently, we have students from 90 different nationalities enrolled at the university, and this year we have received applications from over 100 like, nationalities, and again, like the, the number of non-local students account for 40% of the uh, that are local students. So basically, they account for about 30% if you look at the total student population. And this year, they came from 58 different uh, nationality and region. Uh, another thing I really want to highlight, even though like, uh, this is not like, brand new, but uh, we also have more and more students interested in our dual degree program that are uh, collaboration uh, with many of the top ranked universities in the world. For example, in the, in the US, we have University of uh, California, Berkeley. Uh, in the UK, we have Cambridge and also University of College, London. In China, we have Peking University. In France, we have Sciences Po. In Canada, we have the University of British Columbia. All these like, uh, different collaboration and, uh, allow our students to earn two plus degree. Many of them actually offer more than two degree. And certainly, they can also gain two different experience and two different networks. And then, also recently, we have another collaboration with the uh, Graduate Institute of International and Development Study in Geneva. Many of our students increasingly are interested in working in agency of United Nations, may it be like related to medical or related to other policy. And so this collaboration allows our students to spend like three years in Hong Kong and then one to two years like in Geneva, and also they will be able to get placement in all this agency of uh, United Nations in Geneva. So this is another important uh, dual degree program or collaboration that our students can consider. And we also have separate talk for some of this uh, dual degree program that we have scheduled today. So if any of the students are interested in attending or interested in uh, applying to any of this dual degree program, please also mark the time and place and go and listen to their talk. Uh, if you don't want to spend half your time out away from Hong Kong, but you do want to get some overseas experience, we have a large network of exchange partners. We have now more than 420 exchange partners uh, in more than 49 countries and regions in the world. So any place you can think of, we probably have a partner that you can uh, gain an overseas experience at a different kind of like environment. Uh, I'm sure like, uh, both students and parents will be very concerned about the career prospect of students. I can be reassuring you, Hong Kong U students are highly recognized by employer because of our reputation. So for many, many years, our graduate, compared to other graduates from other institutes in Hong Kong, our students command the highest average salary. And right now, like, uh, based on the latest study that we received from our students, our average salary for our students is about 31, close to $32,000 a month. And for more than 10 years, we have close to 99 or even 100% of employment within three months after graduation. So you can tell like, uh, when you send your children to the University of Hong Kong, not only do they get the best education, but they also guarantee a bright future. So now I'm going to pass the time to uh, the student to do some sharing, and then later on, uh, Surian will come back and tell you, like, with all this like great prospect of at the university, what do you have to do in order to qualify? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ben Im. Thank you. I'm sure you're all excited about our new um, development, and now may I introduce Ariel now to share her experiences. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Ariel. I'm currently a year two student studying science master class. And um, so today, in five minutes, I hope to share with you my HKU experience. Five minutes is absolutely not enough at all. There's so much I want to talk about. But when I first came into HKU, a lot of people asked me, what do you want to achieve in these four to five years? And I t like, after thinking, I said, oh, I'm here to find out. And 
I did find out. It's not just studying at all. So um, this is me and different science activities. So here, during this uh, summer, at the top picture, I was actually doing research in a lab. And I was doing a project on neurodevelopment, so like neuroscience on some tiny worms. And that was extremely fun. But other than that, we actually have a lot of interactions with different professors and other staff. And we even had um, a Nobel laureate for my science students. Um, he is Professor Martin Chalfie. He actually helped in the discovery of green fluorescence protein. So we actually got to have um, some students, including me, we had a discussion with him. And I bombarded him with a lot of questions like, oh, Oh, like what do you think is the most difficult thing in science, etc. So um, we here we are also you see me like filming like behind like a green screen, and that's actually a contest in HKU, and I actually helped them make a YouTube video to teach students about science. And here we have other different interfaculty experiences. So just now I mentioned that. HKU life is not just about studying. Studying, yes, is very important, a responsibility, but there are so many other opportunities that are just waiting for you. So I am actually a very active person in Hall. I'm currently living in St. John's College, and um, I've actually volunteered to become the student representative of the Alumni Association in the college. And I've actually got to interact with so many alumni from maybe like recent graduates to even like 50 years ago, and their stories are absolutely amazing. So here you can see me helping organize some alumni to come back. And here you can see me trying out, stepping out of my comfort zone, trying out new things such as mass dance and hockey. And here I was actually, it was, um, I was really excited to sit at the head table during high table dinner. And I got to talk to a lot of guests. And it was one of the most memorable experiences I think in my whole life. So other than Hall, I think the biggest thing about HKU, it's actually the people. The people motivated me a lot because I remember walking down the corridor and I was like, wow, everyone is so hardworking, so talented. And so who am I? Why am I standing here? And this actually pushed me to go out of my comfort zone. So Professor Yi mentioned that we have a lot of interdisciplinary um, um, aspects in HKU and 100% agree. Even though I'm a science student right now, this semester I'm actually taking up art history and astronomy and we also have CC courses, Common Core, and I actually was able to like um, dabble a bit in Chinese philosophy, which was really interesting and definitely broadened uh, my perspective on who I am except for a science student. So the people here really motivated me to try different things and just explore and push my potential. So career-wise, I understand that this is a, a concern for a lot of people, but I feel like in university, instead of just focusing on science myself, I actually got to explore a lot more other opportunities outside of science. So for example, um, I've always been an avid like illustrator, so I draw. And in HKU, I've actually had a lot of opportunities to do designs for everyone. I'm always just trying to help, like see, oh, do you need design help? Do you need like illustrations? And I've had a lot of opportunities. And I feel like in HKU especially, you just need to ask or there are just opportunities just waiting for you. You just need to be proactive and grab them. So I've also been able to have more opportunities in trying out MC jobs and just sharing in general. So hi everyone, like this, like, this event, for example. And the, so just also imply, like applying that to science. So like drawing for some science articles as well. So in conclusion, I think Hong Kong U is a place where there are really a lot of opportunities, a lot of the interdisciplinary opportunities as well, but it's just how proactive you are in catching them. And I've had a wonderful experience so far. And now I will actually pass my time to Trey, which is also one of the people that I think highly motivated me, very smart, very heartbreaking, but I won't talk too much about him. I'll let him introduce him to, yourself, to you guys. So see. Okay. Great, thank you, Ariel. The feeling is mutual. Ariel is also very hardworking and a very inspiring person. So hi, everyone. My name is Trey. I am originally from America, but I grew up in Bulgaria. I'm a third year IBGM student with a second major in counseling, and I'm here to give you guys just a little bit of insight into what it's like as an international student here, and hopefully that will be useful to you guys. So just a little bit first about why I chose to come to HKU. Why, why did I move to Hong Kong from all the way across the world in Bulgaria? I would say it came down to a few major points for me. 
I think the first one is really the location. I think the location that HKU has is really you know, in, incomparable, and I think it makes it really convenient to both come to campus to live on uh, to live in a hall and also to come to events outside of school. It makes it really convenient to do a lot of things to meet alumni, which I, I think is really something unparalleled that HKU offers. The second thing would be, like uh, Professor Yim mentioned, the comprehensiveness of the school means that we get a lot of alumni and students. I have a lot of friends from every faculty that you can imagine, so we're talking business people and doctors and lawyers and dentists, and you get a really expansive network that I think HKU, that's a real highlight, and also the alumni network, I think is a really big and underrated aspect of HKU because it's had such a good name for such a long time. You get a lot of alumni that are very you know, high ranking in their fields and they're always very eager to come back and to help you and I think it has really been beneficial for me in getting a lot of insight into future career opportunities and also they've been very willing to help me out with when it comes to things like internships or just giving advice. And I would say also one of the things that really is, has been a highlight of HKU as well that makes it unique is that the curriculum is very flexible. Like I mentioned, I'm a business student, but I have a second major in counseling, which is in a completely different faculty. This is something that I think makes HKU really great is that you can have these cross-disciplinary studies and so that you can dabble in different faculties from what might be your own. So you have people that maybe study science or art, but they want to get a little bit of exposure to finance. So they are able to take a second major, a second minor in finance, which I think a lot of students find very helpful and a very nice part about HKU. So just a little bit about my, my social life. Like Ariel, also I'm in St. John's, and that's been a really big highlight of my university life at St. John's. I, uh, just in general. I think for a lot of students at HKU, the hall life is a really big highlight. Uh, it's something very unique that you get here. Each hall has their own culture and their own personality. It's a really great chance to meet people and have an experience that you just really can't have anywhere else. But Ariel already talked a lot about hall, so I'll talk a little bit more about the university-based stuff. One of the big things that I do around campus is I'm the founder and president of the International Student Society under the Business School. I think one of the great things about HKU is we have this entrepreneurial spirit and HKU does a really good job at nurturing that. So in my first year when I came into the university, I noticed that there wasn't a society within the Business School for International Students. So I said, hey, let's go found this thing. And, and two years later, it's one of the really thriving societies within the business school. And so I think HQ has really encouraged me and encourages a lot of students to really go out there and seek opportunities. And if it, those opportunities aren't there, they're very supportive in you in helping you create those opportunities. And so that's been a really big highlight. And I think, like Ariel said, the people at HQ are very interesting. You meet people from all walks of life, all different disciplines. And I think that is something that you really don't get anywhere else. So I, I know a lot of you probably wonder about professional opportunities, so of course I'm, I'm gonna touch on that a little bit. I think HQU does a really great job to support you in your professional journey. I think one of the big things, like I mentioned before, the alumni are very helpful. You get alumni from all ranks, all different companies that are very eager to come back to, to help you out with advice or with internships. I've had a lot of mentors within HKU that have been really helpful, very high ranking people that are still so generous in giving me their time and advice, which has been really, you know, incredibly invaluable in, in my career search. So I think one of the great things, like I said, alumni mentorship is fantastic. I think it also really equips you with the ability to go up there and confidently speak to professionals. I go outside of HKU a lot and I meet people and they say, oh, I'm surprised that you're a student because you have a certain confidence and an ability to interact with, with professionals, which I think has been really helpful for me in, in my journey, especially as a business school student. As you can see at the bottom left, I, uh, last year I won the Student Contribution Award, and that I think is also reflective of HQ's ability to nurture students and to really reward them when they go out and do things. HQ is always really trying to support student enrichment. Um, Lead for Life on the bottom left is a character leadership program, which is really innovative. HQ is one of the only universities in the world that does this. It's a mentorship program that is also focused on building up students of character and leaders of character, which I think is something that is a testament to HQ's innovation. And the international exposure, like I've mentioned before, is also unparalleled. Being a part of the international business program, we've gotten opportunities like a study trip to Singapore, which has been really insightful for me to get a view of what it's like to work in different countries. And as a part of IBGM as well, we get a lot of different company visits. So we've been to Blackstone, DBS, uh, uh, Moody's, a lot of very big high ranking companies that has been very valuable. And the enrichment opportunities are also fantastic. Next semester I'll be going to NYU Stern in New York City, which I'm, I'm very exci uh, excited for. And 
So I think, I hope that provides a little bit of an overview of all the professional opportunities that HKU offers. And I think that has really been one of the highlights for me. It's been really, as I'm entering my third and fourth year of university, I feel very confident to approach the workforce and to interact with professionals and, and everything that comes after graduation. Even though I still love being at, at school, uh, everything has been fun, but I also feel very well equipped for the future. So I hope that was insightful to you all. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, Frey. Well. Oh, give me a sec to change back to the um, more, I don't know how to describe this, but I'm pretty sure you'd be very interested to know how to apply now after hearing all our very exciting happenings now, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, admission standards. <clears throat> Let me just give a short summary of what Professor Yim and our two students had just um, uh, shared, shall we? So, Hong Kong U, very flexible, very international, highly ranked, globally recognized, and lots of fun and exciting programs and very innovative in our program provisions. We're always creating new programs. So even for, say, their School of I or I School or the School of Innovation, which is just established this year, we're just bringing their, we want our student to stay ahead of time. So you don't have to follow, but you will be well prepared for the very fast pacing developing world. So that's our program provision and the lots of opportunities like our students have to share with you. So research, master, um, science master class for research, of course, and exchange, of course, and internship, career support, 100% employment and very high effort salary. All these, all these. Is a, very well packaged full year education or experiences for students. So in general, Hong Kong U would be really worth the time for you to come and spend and meet very exciting and ex um, interesting people, okay? Now, I'm pretty sure, anyone wanna apply to Hong Kong U now? None of you? None. Oh, shall I stop now? <clears throat> now, one more time. Anyone would like to apply to Hong Kong U? That's the scene I want to see, okay? Thank you very much. Now, I'm pretty sure you want to know the admission standards. Of course, we accept a wide range of um, different qualifications, the more common ones, SAT, AP, a GCA level and IB, but all other national qualifications we do consider as well, Canadian, Australian, Indian, Indonesian, Malaysian, da 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 da. So all these we do consider so. And we do have English language proficiency. If you remember, Professor Yim have stressed time again that all the programs at Hong Kong U are taught in English. So we do have English language requirement. So some of the time we will hear from parents that I'm from a English speaking country. Uh, do I still have to provide two four hours? Yes, you do. Okay, so English language requirement is requ required. Program requirement, we have that many programs. Of course, some of the programs would have some specific subjects that's expected from your high school education which you have to check very carefully when you choose the program and you have to check the specific subject required. For example, for engineering related programs, you are expected to find days where you to have math and maybe one of the science subjects. So make sure you check, okay? Now, anyone IB here, IB? Just a quick show of hands. Yeah, probably 30%, <clears throat> okay. Now for, uh, we do, well, the, the, the engines requirement will say IB diploma. IB diploma, a full diploma, okay? That's the basic entrance requirement. And for 2024 entry, the range for um, out of 45, it's 32 to 41. 
out of 45. That's for all the programs, um, generally speaking. But of course, some of the programs would have even higher expected lower boundary. It's not requirement, so make sure. It's not that you have to meet 41 to enter um, or to be enrolled in a certain program. It's just giving you a range and references, okay? So some of the programs will have higher expect a lower boundary, which you will find on their brochures, which I suppose all of you will be receiving. If you don't have the brochure, make sure you get one, okay? The programs have their expected lower boundary listed there, especially for IB. And so that's the English language requirement. I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. So for A-level, it's three A-level subjects. Three A-level subjects. So there's a very long remarks there, excluding all language subjects, say, Chinese. So it's not counted as one of the three, okay? All those are not counted there. Again, English language requirement. For STAP, it's a little bit more, uh, not very complicated, but there's a different combination, I would say. If you have SAT and AP, then different programs would have different expected lower boundary of SAT. Some may range from a 1,380, some may expect you to have 1,400 something as the SAT expected lower boundary, and three AP subjects. So SAT and three AP subjects will be the first pattern of the requirement, okay? If you don't have SAT, we expect you to have more AP subjects. Usually it would be four or five or even more, okay? Depends on different programs. So check out the required number of APs if you don't have SAT and the expected lower boundary of SAT if you have that, okay? Now, point to note, for all uh, applicants, you are expected to provide high school transcript from grade 10 onwards. So, or senior level, pretty much three years, stay back, okay? <clears throat> high school transcript need to have um, stamps from the school. And predictor and final results, of course, um, we again always get the question, I don't have the examination result when I submit the application, is that okay? Of course okay, we know, say A-level or IB, you will only receive your result next year in June or even August. So when you apply now, you just need to tell us clearly when you expect to take the exam and when you expect to have the result. And when we receive it, we'll review it based on the predicted score, high school transcript, and all a, a document that you submitted and do a holistic review and give you a conditional offer, okay? So when, if you meet the conditional offer, when you have the final result, then you meet that, the offer will be confirmed. So non-academic consideration include extracurriculars, at least one, oh well, personal statement, one. You will hear from me that you can apply up to three programs, but for personal statement, just one. Yes, you have to include everything if the programs that you apply are not remotely close to each other, try to include all those into your personal statement, okay? And references, at least one, from your high school counselor or teacher from the high school, okay? And you can have more, but at least one. Now, interview, different programs would have interview arranged, but Please take note, not all the programs require interview. There are lots of students got enrolled into Hong Kong U without an interview, so don't really panic if you don't receive an interview invitation, okay? Interview is not a must for all programs. Of course, there are programs required to have interview, say medicine, of course. So selected uh, student will be invited for interview so make sure you check your email account regularly for the email that you use to apply to hong kong you check that regularly all information communication from us will be sent via email so i don't have the fullest of their interview schedule right now you may check on our website time after time now official yeah so that's this is one point I would like to stress, and this is very important. Uh, 
from this year on, that's for 2025 entry, we expect the final result to be sent from the board. Say if you're taking IB, make sure you add Hong Kong U as one of the institution that you're applying that we can receive or the board will send us the official result. That's for IB. A level, different boards, make sure we will receive from the board. Okay? So official result, very important from the board, from the um, <coughs> issuing uh, board or organization, so, so to speak, okay? So when you apply, only electronic copies are required. You can scan and upload, but when it comes to the verification process, the latest stage of your application, we do expect to receive the official result. That's the one that from the board, okay? This is very important for 2025, okay? I, again, any of you, uh, <laughs> lots of you are taking photographs. Yes, this is getting even more and more complicated because um, we do have different talent scheme uh, this, um, in the uh, past two or three years. So we uh, have a question from parents and students, so do, do, am I a local or am I a non-local student? This is according to the Immigration Department and the Education Bureau of Hong Kong. If you're holding student visa or entry permit, dependent visa, or you know, any of those listed there, you are considered as a non-local student. Non-local student, okay? So put it very um, sim uh, simply put it, um, <clears throat> you, if you need a student visa to study in Hong Kong, you are a non-local student then you will be paying the non-local tuition fees. Then you will be asking, so am I a non-local? I cannot really tell each of you. You cannot really show me your ID card or your son or daughter's ID card and I can tell you whether you're local or not because it's very complicated. So to make sure, I would really advise you to check with the immigration department, tell them your specific details and ask whether your son or yourself is a non-local student or not, okay? That's according to the immigration department, okay? So this is the timeline for 2025 entry. Application is already open, and the first round of um, application ends on the 27th of November. It's uh, 12 o'clock noon, Hong Kong time. Okay, Hong Kong time, very important there. So if you re, um, submit your application by that time, from then onwards, we will be started to review your application and start to receive start to <laughs> what? oh okay uh, start to uh, issue all, uh, all, uh, conditional offer from then on okay and you are expected to submit all the supporting document by the 1st of December if you do not have or uh, if you haven't received your uh, all the document required by 1st of December you will be considered as a rolling admissions round student or applicant okay so all the documents need to be ready by 1st of December so from then on, rolling admissions. Up to three programs. There are like 55 degree programs. We have minors and majors over 100. You will find a long list of programs available. You can apply up to three. In priority order, make sure you choose wisely. So the tuition fee um, for the local, it's a there's a slight increase for 2025, it's 44,500 Hong Kong dollars. For non-local student, there are two kinds. Um, the one kind is for, um, with a science related or a STEM related program, we're charging 218,000 Hong Kong. For non-STEM programs, it's uh, slightly lower, it's 198,000 Hong Kong. Good news, we are very generous in our scholarship programs or um, awarding scholarship for our students. I would say probably the most generous among the local universities, if I may be so um, taking pride of that. And we do have academic ones and non-academic ones for their entrance or admission scholarship. You do not need to apply generally, okay? We will review your application and may invite you for interview if we are going, um, whether we're going to award the scholarship. So this is the amount that we have um, issued, awarded for 2024 entry. It's 250 million Hong Kong dollars. 
the pure amount. So try, you know, if you are joining other universities' uh, fairs, I'm pretty sure you will be, then see you the comparison there. Now, so that's all for me for, the, for this section here. We do have the consultation at library extension room 5 from 1 p.m. onwards. We will not be able to answer your question now, but you're most welcome to go to the consultation room and ask my um, colleagues any question you might have, see whether you're local or non-local, which will be very difficult. And the pin and sticker redemption booth, very exciting, very beautiful, very interesting pins, and learn how to get them. If you have the whole lot, I'm pretty sure it will be, you will be well envied, right? Now, so that's from us, okay? And all our information other on, uh, than on the admission brochure, scan the QR code, everything is there. Thank you very much. Please leave. Thank you. Um, at the front door now. Thank you.